Hello! In this video, I'm showing you how to operate your Valiant Ecotec Plus combination boiler. So I'm going to guide you through the menus so you can set the boiler up just the way you like it and make your boiler as efficient as possible. I'll show you how to adjust your central heating temperature and on some boilers you may not be able to do that and I'll get into that on the video. And of course I'll show you how to adjust your hot water temperature so you can make water hotter or cooler and again make it as efficient as possible. I'll also show you where to find the comfort setting that is preheat on this boiler where the boiler will keep itself preheated all through the day and night for your hot water. And you can turn that setting on and off and i'll show you where to find that again to make your boiler more efficient and reduce your gas bill i'll show you how you can turn your boiler on and off and also if you ever get a fault code i'll show you how you can reset the boiler so you can get it working again and of course there's the f22 fault where you need to top up your system and i'll show you how you go about doing that and a few things you need to watch out for now this boiler has a whole lot of menus that you can go through. Some of them will show you how much energy you're using, but you don't really need to go through those to use the boiler and set it up. So I decided to make a separate video for those because this video has gone a little bit long. So if you want to watch that video all about the menus, then you can click on the card right now to watch that video or you'll find the link down in the description. Also down in the description, you'll find lots of other really helpful videos that I've made all about your central heating system and how to make it as efficient as possible. So make sure you check those out. Right, now let's show you how to operate your boiler. So here's our lovely Valiant Ecotec Plus, and this is a combination boiler. I wanna make a quick apology for the reflection on the screen. It just reflects everything in the room. Just a quick note, if you want to know how to clean your Valiant filter, then I've made separate videos for those. So here's a display on the front of our boiler, and this is the way that we normally see it. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit and make that a little bit clearer for you. So I'm going to run through what we've got showing on the display here. Just here we have the temperature of the boiler. Now this is not the temperature of your hot water, it's the temperature that the boiler is running at. Up in the top right hand corner here we have the time. Underneath that we have our central heating and you can see it says off. Under that we have our hot water temperature and DHW stands for domestic hot water. And under that we have the pressure that the central heating system is at and it's showing 1.3 bar. Up at the top here we have some icons and they show us what is in operation on the boiler and it also shows us what we have installed on the boiler. So maybe additional controls. Around the outside of the display, we have some touch screen icons and we can only operate the ones which are lit up. So our power button and our menu button are showing at the moment. If I touch one of those buttons, I'm going to touch the menu one at the bottom here. The screen will get brighter. Now we're ready to make some changes. So if I press that menu button again, you can now see all the icons have lit up all the way around the display. The icon just here that adjusts our central heating temperature. And depending on what controls you've got depends on whether you will be able to adjust that central heating temperature. And I'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a minute or two. Under that we have our hot water temperature so we can adjust how hot our hot water gets. Under that we have a question mark. That will give you a description of how to operate the boiler. Next to that we have a back arrow and of course then we have the menu button. And then there's a chimney sweep mode that's for engineers. And then we have this sliding control here to move up and down the menus or adjust temperatures up and down. Now at the moment, the central heating icon is highlighted. It looks white here, but it is actually a yellow color. On the display right now, there is a line going through the picture of the radiator indicating that it is turned off. And underneath the heating status, it shows the actual temperature that the boiler is at now. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust the temperature that your central heating is running at. If we want to adjust the temperature that the central heating is running at, we can just touch the sliding control or we can slide our finger up and down it to adjust that temperature. Now the recommended temperature to set your central heating to is between 60 and 65 degrees. Now I've changed the temperature to 65 degrees. Now to set that temperature, I now need to press the tick, which is flashing. And now 65 degrees is set at our target temperature for our central heating. Now this is not the temperature that your house gets to. That's the job of your room thermostat. This temperature adjusts how hot your radiators will get. And in turn, that affects how hot your house gets. 
Now the boiler will work much more efficiently if we can set this temperature down low, maybe 50 degrees or lower. Setting your temperature down lower will mean the radiators will be running cooler and it will take longer for the house to warm up, but it will be running more efficiently, saving you gas and reducing your gas bill. Now we can set the temperature for our central heating radius to be much higher. We can set them right up at 75 degrees. We can press the tick arrow to set that. And you can see on the display, it says that change has been saved. And now our central heating radiators are gonna get really hot and the house will warm up really quickly. But that also means that the boiler will be running less efficiently. So ideally we wanna set this temperature down, like I said, between 60 and 65 degrees. And when we go back to the main display, we can see that it says our heating is now set to 65 degrees. One last thing about adjusting our central heating temperature. If we go right down to 30 degrees and then we go one degrees lower, it will then turn the central heating off. And you can see in the display there, it says heating off. Now I've been showing you how to adjust your central heating temperature. If you don't see the heating temperature in your display, then it's probably because you have a Valiant control fitted. And this unit is called My Valiant Connect. And this connects to an app on your smartphone. If we go into the menu, we can see that the radiator icon is lit up, but we can't make any adjustments to the central heating temperature over here. And you can see in the display just here, there is no heating icon. And there is also this icon up here showing you there is a Valiant control connected to the boiler. If you have the Senso Room Pure, that's a room thermostat and the timer on the boiler, or you have My Valent Connect with the app on your smartphone, you will not be able to make any adjustments to the central heating temperature. That's how hot the radiators get. The temperature that your radiators run at is now adjusted by the boiler to make it run efficiently as possible. So that's it for adjusting your central heating. Now let's move on to how to adjust your hot water temperature and make it as efficient as possible. So once again, we touch the menu button in the middle of the boiler, and then we select the hot water tap. And then you can see the icon will change. And in the display, it says desired hot water temperature. And now we can adjust the temperature that the hot water is at by using the sliding control. Now we can set our hot water temperature right up at 65 degrees. Now that is really hot water. That's like scalding. And then we touch the tick icon to set that temperature. And now you can see it says desired domestic hot water temperature, 65 degrees. And when we go back again, we can also see it says 65 degrees in the display there above the DHW standing for domestic hot water. Now 65 degrees is really hot, like I said, scalding water, and we don't want to set our water that high because there's no point in heating our hot water up to a really high temperature just to cool it down at the tap with some cold water. Because you're just wasting gas, you're increasing your gas bill, and of course you're adding extra wear to your boiler. Now if you're watching then, you'll have seen that I've just reduced the temperature of the hot water right down to its lowest setting, which is 35 degrees. Now we can set our hot water temperature at 35 degrees, but that would just be lukewarm water. So what temperature should you be setting your hot water to? Well, around about 50 degrees, it seems to be a good temperature for most people. So I'm gonna go back into the menu. I'm gonna scroll up to make that 50 degrees. And there we go, 50 degrees. And then I'll press the tick to save that setting. Now, if you think your hot water is still a little hotter than you need it, then just adjust it down a little bit, maybe 47 degrees. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna press the back arrow and take us back to the menu where you'll then see it says 50 degrees for our domestic hot water temperature. Just a quick note, if you have a shower that runs off your hot and cold water, if you set your hot water temperature quite low, you may find your shower doesn't quite get hot enough. So that's one time you may want to set your hot water just a little hotter. Now, another reason you might want to set your hot water temperature at a much higher temperature is if you like having really hot baths or topping your bath up with hot water. 
Now, some of my customers, they like to have a really hot bath every now and again, but they don't want the hot water set at that high temperature all the time. So when they come to have a bath, they just adjust the temperature up to say 65 degrees. And when they finish having a bath, they then adjust the temperature back down again to a more comfortable level of say 50 degrees. And that's a really efficient way of using your hot water. That's about it for adjusting your hot water temperature. Hopefully you can now adjust the temperature of your hot water nice and easily. Just one last thing you need to know about regarding your hot water. And that's an additional setting. And on this boiler, it's called comfort. Or the more generic term for it is preheat. Just before I get on to that comfort setting, I want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos on products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Now I've just worked my way through the menu to the comfort setting and you can see it says here comfort mode off. Now to turn it on or to turn it off we use the sliding control move down to comfort press the tick and now we can adjust whether it's on or off. Slide this up to on I then press the tick to set that. So now comfort is now turned on. Or as you can see in the display, it says comfort mode activated. Now you can see comfort mode on. We press the back arrow and then press the back arrow again to go back to the home screen. And now up in the top here, we can see this little icon flashing. That is the comfort icon. So if you have that in your display, you have comfort or preheat turned on. Now what's going to happen is the boiler is going to fire up and start heating itself up. You can see the flames appeared in the top there. That's that little icon looking like a flame. We still got the symbol flashing showing that comfort is activated and is active right now. And you can see the temperature of the boiler starting to rise. Now the boiler is going to keep heating itself up until it gets to about 50 degrees. You can see the flame is still on. You can see the comfort is still flashing and you can still see the temperature rising. And at 50 degrees, there we go, you can see the flame has now gone out. And the boiler is now going to keep running for about 30 seconds until comfort mode has finished its cycle. Now I always recommend having comfort turned off or preheat because there's no point in keeping your boiler preheated all through the day and all through the night when you're not using your hot water. In just a second or two, you'll see the preheat icon stop flashing and that comfort setting has finished its preheat cycle. The idea of preheat is to keep your boiler preheated so that when you turn your hot tap on, the boiler is already hot and then it doesn't take very long for hot water to come out of the tap. And that's all preheat is for, is to speed up the time that it takes for the hot water to come out of the tap. And like I've showed you, that then means that the boiler is going to be coming on every hour or so to warm itself back up again to 50 degrees, just waiting for you to turn a hot tap on. Now, if you have preheat turned off, you're going to have to wait an extra 15 to 30 seconds for the water to come out of your tap. But then you're not wasting energy, keeping your boiler hot all through the day and all through the night. Just a quick note that if you have your central heating on, that is exactly the same as having preheat on because obviously the boiler is then hot heating up your central heating. So again, it won't take long for your hot water to come out of the tap. Now, there are some instances where this preheat might be useful. For instance, if you're on a water meter, you're not going to use so much water because your hot water is going to come out of that tap a little bit quicker. If your boiler is in a loft or in an outhouse, then when you turn your hot tap on in the middle of the winter, it's going to take quite a bit longer for your hot water to come out of the tap because the boiler may be really cold. And if your boiler is in a loft or an outhouse, don't turn comfort on to keep the boiler warm to stop it from freezing because the boiler already has a built-in frost thermostat. 
And something else to consider if your boiler is somewhere where it's really cold is because it is really cold, the boiler will cool down quicker and preheat will be coming on more often, using more energy and of course adding wear to your boiler and increasing your gas bill. So for all those reasons, I always recommend having preheat turned off. Now I'll run through this sequence one more time and talk you through how to turn this function on and off. So here's our boiler display and preheat is turned off at the moment. If we want to turn it on, we press the menu button in the middle. Then we press menu again and we're taken to this menu where it says control, information and settings. We now want to touch the tick icon to select control. There we are, press tick. And now we can see comfort mode on the display. And we can see that it says off. Depending on what controls you have fitted on the boiler, you may have some additional options in this control menu. But we can just ignore those and use the sliding control on the side to slide down and select a comfort mode. Then we press the tick again to select that comfort mode. Then we use the sliding control to slide up and down to select whether we want on or off. Then we can touch the tick to select whether we want it on or off. And then the screen will go back to the control menu. We can then press the back arrow to take us back to the next menu. And again, we can press back again to take us back to the standby screen. And depending on whether you've got that comfort setting turned on or off will depend on whether you see the icon in the top of the display. So if you see the icon, you have the comfort setting preheat turned on. And if you don't see the icon, then you have comfort, that's preheat, turned off. Now moving on to the power button. If you touch the power button, it will put the boiler into standby mode and the screen will go off and you'll no longer get hot water or central heating. If you touch the button again, it will turn the boiler back on again. Now your power button is also the reset button. Now here's a F29 fault. And this fault will come up if the boiler goes out while it is in operation. There's two buttons illuminated, the power button and the tick button. If I press the tick button, then it just takes us back to the home screen. And you can see on the top there, there's a warning triangle telling us that there's a fault. But it doesn't really help us. It just lets us go through the menus. And when I press the back arrow, you can see it goes back to F29. So if you do get a fault code on the front of the boiler, apart from F22, we need to reset the boiler. And to do this, we just press and hold the power button for five seconds. And then the boiler resets and that's it. You're ready to go again. Now, if after resetting your boiler, the fault code comes back again, then obviously that indicates there is a fault with the boiler and you're going to need to call a gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler. Now here's another fault code F28. So all I do is just press and hold the reset button. That's the power button for five seconds that resets the boiler and then I'm ready to go again. So that's it for that power button. Now let's move on to the final thing which you definitely need to know about and that is the F22 fault and how to get your boiler running again. Now once again, you can see we've got two buttons lit up. We've got the tick button and we've also got the power button. Resetting the boiler on this occasion is not going to help us. If we press the tick button, the display changes and it says a water pressure in the heating installation too low. And it also gives you a name and a phone number to call, but you don't need to call anybody. All you need to do is to just top the boiler back up again. Now I've just worked my way through a couple of menus where I've now come to this screen here, which says water pressure. Now all I need to do is to add some more water to the boiler. And to do this is nice and straightforward, but we do need to be careful because we don't want to put too much pressure in the boiler because that can lead to more problems and we don't want more problems. So what we need to do is to go underneath the boiler and there's lots of pipes and valves, but what we're looking for is the two gray handles. You've got one just here and there's one over there and they both say closed on the front of them. Now I'm gonna make sure that the water pressure gauge is in the display, and then I'm gonna go underneath the boiler and open up both of these valves. So that's that one open. You can tell when it's open when it's in line, and then I'm gonna turn this valve here, 
I'm going to keep my hand on it and I'm going to watch the pressure rise on the front of the boiler. Now you can see my hand is still on the valve and I'm watching that pressure go up. And then in a second, the pump is going to start running and the pressure will increase in the boiler as the pump is running and you'll hear that bit of noise as water is going into the boiler. Now, because the pump has started running, the pressure has risen quite quickly, but the pump will stop running in just a sec and the pressure will drop back down again. So I'm going to close both the valves and wait for the pump to stop running. Now the pump has stopped running, I can see the pressure is now at 1.3 bar. So I want to top this boiler up somewhere between 1 and 1.5 bar. So I'm just taking it up to 1.5. And there we go, 1.5 bar. And now I'm going to close this valve here and then close this one here. And there we go, that's it done. That's the boiler all topped up again. Press the tick button, water pressure OK. Now you'll probably have this come up on the screen and it just says purging and it's just running the boiler and making sure that all the air is out of the boiler. So that's it, your boiler is all back up and running again. You could leave the boiler as it is or we can press the tick button to take us back to the standby screen. Right, that's about it then. So if you want to watch one of my other videos, you can click on the links just here. You can click on subscribe, click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share me with your friends, and it's always my toolbox fund. Bye for now. See you next time.